after the major and somewhat unexpected success of Gen 4, Game Freak had to deliver on the next main series entry. But they couldn't just jump into a new generation, especially since the DS was kind of challenging for them to work with during Diamond and Pearl's development. So they decided to remake Gen 2 giving us Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and let me tell you, they went above and beyond with these games. Please note that this is the only game in the franchise that I struggle to take my nostalgia goggles off for. I have fond memories of all of the GBA and DS entries for sure, but none of them meant as much to me as this game did. I replayed it so much that I basically became sick of it for a couple years, but I still loved it while replaying it for this video. Now granted that could be because I ditched my star and played with my dream Johto team instead, which was a lot of fun. But before I get ahead of myself I should explain why so many people call this game Game Freak's magnum opus. The first thing you notice while playing is those graphics. They're absolutely incredible. Despite sharing Gen 4's style they're nowhere near as washed out and as one of the most beautiful tile sets in the franchise. And paired with the beautiful reworkings of the classic Gen 2 songs it just makes for a wonderful experience. The homely vibe hits you and makes every emotion you felt playing the originals come back in full force and then some. Now the second thing you notice is, holy shit the Pokemon follow you! In one of the greatest additions to the franchise in my opinion, Pokemon can follow you around and be interacted with, which leads to many fun and memorable moments. This was such a beloved mechanic that the fandom basically threw a fit when it didn't return in Gen 5. It did eventually return but from what I can understand, this is still the best implementation of this mechanic. And it was made even better with this little thing. The Pokewalker. The Pokewalker was basically a little pedometer you could send your Pokemon to so they could have battles with other trainers and basically just play a bunch of mini games. Unfortunately mine's dead or just needs new batteries, I can't really tell but I used to love this peripheral as a kid, I take it with me everywhere. Messing around with this little gadget really made 10 year old me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I felt closer to my Pokemon than I ever had before and I'm definitely going to use this in the future if I can get it to work again. Of course having your Pokemon follow you around is great but it doesn't mean shit if the adventure sucks. But luckily for us this is a Gen 2 remake so we have a long captivating adventure ahead of us. If you want to know my opinion on the story of Johto, go check out my Crystal review. But for those of you who've seen it, you'll know that I love everything about Johto. And for those who grew up with Gen 2, you're in for a treat because instead of a one-to-one -one remake like Fire Red and Leaf Green, we've got a mix of all three Gen 2 games with a bunch of extra content added on. In terms of story, we have actual Team Rocket executives, all with their own personalities instead of glorified grunts. The Kimono Girls play a larger role in the story as to Zizina Suicune, as well as an entire cutscene of Arki's giving birth and the reveal that Giovanni is Silver's dad. All of this stuff alone was enough to convince people to buy this game back in the day, and on top of that we have a bunch of gameplay improvements and the new features. First off we have the improved bug catching contest that doesn't take forever to beat. But for fans of a more traditional Safari Zone, you're in luck because it makes a return here, and it's super customizable. You also have two new facilities in the Battle Frontier and Pokeathlon Dome. The Battle Frontier actually made a return in Platinum, but is a little easier and had 5 brains instead of 7, and this is a version that you'll find in these games. While a lot of fans rejected the Gen 4 incarnation of the Battle Frontier, its inclusion is still great and much like in Emerald, adds hours of gameplay. As does the Pokeathlon. The Pokeathlon is a collection of Olympic style mini games that involve using the touchscreen and honestly, it's probably my all time favourite side mode in any video game ever. I don't think I could ever speedrun Heart Gold because as soon as I'd get to the National Park I'd be tempted to play this awesome side mode. It's so fun and addictive and I still have a blast every time I play and I'm sure you guys will too. As always, there's some quality of life improvements too. Like a better Poke game with a whole host of new features, one of which is being able to get the numbers of gym leaders that you've beaten from both Kanto and Johto. This is really neat because not only does every leader have an incredible team and you rebattle them, but you also get a cute little cutscene for each of them, which helps flesh out their character a little more. And if all of that wasn't enough, you have loads of little secrets to uncover, as well as smaller features that kind of go unnoticed by some players, like Cameron the Photographer. If you ask me, this is the closest the main series has come to perfection. The only real flaws I can see here are the ones that are inherent to Gen 2, like the over-reliance on Gen 1. But apart from that, you have what I would call a genuine masterpiece. Even if you hate Gen 2, you could probably derive some enjoyment from this game. So if you have the chance to check out this game, please Please do so. It's incredibly fun and captivating and, in my humble opinion, it's the greatest Pokemon adventure you can experience.